Hi, you're watching and listening to Fat Bidin Knows Everything. It's because I do know everything. And this week, what I want to talk about is, I think it's been the topic of the week, of the day. And that is, the resignation of Dr. Mazli Malik as Education Minister. Now I know I haven't been uh, uploading any videos in the past few weeks. It's because I uh, took a break, right? Took a break because it was a school holiday, something to go for holiday with the kids, the family and everything. Now I'm back. Um, it was the new year. Happy new year. And uh, yeah, this is the topic of the new year, I guess. Okay, so right after I recorded uh, Fat Billion Knows Everything, the current episode that you're watching right now, uh, news came out saying that uh, the letter that Masli received from Bersatu calling for his resignation has been revealed. And in the news, it is reported that um, it was actually written by the Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahathir, asking uh, Masli to resign uh, because he was not following uh, orders from the cabinet. He was he was he was doing his own thing. You know, among the things that he was doing, that he was defying the orders of the cabinet was like the free breakfast issue, the Jawi issue, and the the, the internet issue in schools. And uh, look, I when I hear this, this is something I didn't know, right? Uh, I I didn't want to re-record a whole new episode, so just consider this an addendum, okay, uh, an addition uh, to to the current episode that you're watching right now. Um, and uh, when I hear this, I'm like, dude. It's like even the respect for him goes even higher lah because you know he's he's um he's doing things because he wants to do he's doing things that he feels is right, right? And he's even going to defy people above him. Uh I don't know. It's it kinda makes me feel happy. Um now here's the thing. Everybody has been calling for the resignation of um Dr. Masli from the very beginning. Uh, he has turned out to be, you know, he's been the minister for about 20 years, 20 months. Um, he more or less um, became like the clown of the media. Mm, people were calling him Ahmad Maslan 2.0, if you remember Ahmad Maslan. Um, um, they were making fun of him a lot and all that, uh, which I thought was quite unfair. Um, well, I'm going to be totally transparent here. Uh, I know Masli. I mean, we're not buddies or anything. We're not really like close friends, but I've known him even before he was minister. Mm. He used to read his writings. Uh, we worked in CVE, which is Countering Violent Extremism um, and Religious Extremism, right? We used to work in that field together. Uh, we know each other from there. Uh, he helped me out in a documentary I made before. Um, and he knows my work. I know his work. Um, yeah, I think he's a decent guy. He, um, he has the right, uh, I guess, opinions and beliefs when it comes to the religion of Islam. Uh, so I like to read his writings. He's very liberal, very open-minded when it comes to the religion. Mm. He's, um, um, because of that, I've always found him very appealing. Um, when he entered politics, first term MP, he won the last general election. Straight away, he was appointed my education minister. Which was quite surprising, but then yet also, eh, it's not too bad because he's an academician. Who else, right? To take over education ministry. Um, uh, I started working with him. Fat Bidin. Uh, we started working uh, with Masli's team. Um, because he and his team had kind of reached out saying that, hey, we need some help. See if you can help us out when it comes to like perception in the media and all that. So we came aboard and we helped him. Um, Manage his YouTube channel. We created his YouTube, his official YouTube channel. Um, over the course of working with him, I found him to be a very decent person, and um, I actually supported the fact that he is the education minister. Uh, he's done a lot of good uh, to the education system. I like what he's done. Um, I grew up with parents who never emphasized uh, exam results and scores and things like that, and thought that. We should all grow up 
as holistic human beings. I mean, he suggested that we should eliminate all exams in primary school, the lower primary school. I was all for it, and I have a my daughter is in standard three. Um, she's more or less thriving uh, in a system where there's no exams. Um, and she's very holistic. She's part of the school dance troupe. Mm, you know, she talks to us about religion. Yeah, she also wants to be a scientist. Well, not animator lah, right? which is great, right? And um, I want to list down all the good things that Masli has done as the minister, but you know what? I think I don't have to because on the day that he resigned, suddenly the media. Now, just think, right? I believe, I believe that Masli is a victim. A victim of other politicians, victim of the public, and victim of the media as well. I, I'm in the media, and I am a journalist, and I see how the media was bullying him and harassing him. He's done a lot of good. He did mention when he announced his resignation that, you know, it was because of the media not picking up the good things that he's done and highlighting it. I kind of do agree, uh, because take the black shoe incident, for example. He's known to be the black shoe minister, right? Because he said, oh, we should change all shoes to black in school. And it became like, that was the number one joke against Masli. Yeah, of course he said that. But it was like 30 seconds in a one and a half hour long speech where he spoke about so many other significant issues. But the media chose to harp on the black shoe thing. Huh? And it was like that for many, many other issues. And the media turned him into a clown. I mean, I know the guy. He's a very funny and down-to-earth guy. But he's not a clown when it comes to the education system. Um, he's not a clown when it comes to work. There are many things about him that I do like. Like I said, I'm not going to list out everything because the same media that demonized him, that made him into a clown and wanted him to resign, suddenly started writing such positive stories about him and listing down his contributions and the good things that he's done. Suddenly he's become like a hero to the media. What's up, man? Huh. Huh. So you can go and search all the new sites of the things that he's done that apparently now is so positive, right? But I will tell you some of the things that I do like. I mentioned just now that um, he took away all exams, right? Abolished exams primary school. That's great. Uh, I like the fact that he started the uh, inclusive education system where everybody has a right to education. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, even you, if you are an undocumented child, you will have a right to education. So it's inclusive and I like that. That is great because I think education is a human right for everyone. He did that. Right? Uh, he introduced a system where people would uh, learn about civic consciousness uh, uh, in schools. And that is great too because... I've always thought that was something that's lacking in the education system in Malaysia, right? Uh, um, he and I have spoken about this too. Um, we've spoken about how we feel that the Malaysian younger generation in Malaysia, they need to know about more things than just exams. And that's why he wanted this civic education uh, in schools. It was great. Um, um, so I like that. Uh, he amended the AUKU, the University and University Colleges Act, to give students and even faculty members more freedom to be involved in politics or to be involved in anything right empowering them giving them more autonomy which is great right the the free breakfast in schools everybody seems to be harping about how bad idea it is but look i think it's great that there's free breakfast in school in fact i think all meals that are available should be free in school if the government can afford it right it provides an environment for the students, especially those who are underprivileged, to not worry about one. They have one less thing to worry. Food. When you go to school, you study. So it's great. Right? And these are all good things that he has done. Right? He stopped streaming after Form 3 in secondary schools, which is great. Right? Because you're just too young at 16 to be streaming and knowing what you want to do in your life, you know, to stream your education. Mm. 
and if you make the wrong decision at such a young age and then later on you want to change it's a little bit difficult so it was good all right um so yeah i think it's a decent guy he's not corrupt he's clean he knows what he's doing just to me i feel that he was a little bit naive because he used to always tell me that although he's entered politics he doesn't want to play politics unfortunately if you're going to hold a portfolio like the education ministry the education portfolio is such a big portfolio it's such an important portfolio people are going to gun for you the media are going to be ruthless other politicians are going to be ruthless um even in your own party right and the public public in malaysia they're just ignorant they see anything that you know they, they don't they don't need to know everything they just see a headline and they can screw you just because of the headline so i'm a little bit upset that Fat Masli has decided to resign because I thought we had somebody good in the education system and I was getting quite happy. I have three kids, they're all going to go to school in Malaysia. I'm not one to send them to private schools, so I do want a public school system that is actually good and quality right? and something that I want and I'm looking for. And you have somebody like that. But unfortunately, because of the politics, because of how the media tried to portray him, he's no longer the education minister. So I am quite upset. But then again, we shouldn't be talking about him like as if he's dead. I mean, he's still the MP for St. Paul Brangam. Uh, and he's gone back there. Uh, and the people there are still supporting him. I'm sure he can do a lot of other things too as the MP of St. Paul Brangam. It's not over for him. But I do, I do worry about who is going to be the next education minister. And if this education minister is really going to be as open-minded and as progressive as much as he is. Um, that's my only worry. Um, I'll be watching closely who is going to take over the education ministry and, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens and I'm going to be very, very critical too. Right? So, yeah, I'm very upset. Uh, I know there is a petition now going along um, trying to save Mazdi, right? An online petition on change.org. Um, and they wanted to collect, like, at first they wanted to collect 100,000 signatures and then it exceeded that and it's 200,000 and it exceeded that too. So a lot of people. But all this comes too late. Before this, Nobody wanted to say anything to defend Masdi because he, he was a clown and if you see and if people see you defending a clown you're going to be considered a clown too so nobody wanted to defend him. I know personally I know people who were like so critical of Masdi and wanted him to resign then suddenly he resigns and then they change their tune. Oh no, Masdi should stay. Well, a little bit too late lah. Really? Huh. A little bit too late. Sucks. The one minister who I felt was doing something that I like as a citizen I selected this I elected this party this this coalition to be the government and then there's this one minister who's doing something that I like in the ministry and he is asked to resign he has he is forced to resign and he cannot continue holding that portfolio I don't know seems very very uh, undemocratic to me lah. but anyway that's it lah. let me know what you think about Majli I know a lot of people I mean, I wrote about this in my column in Malaysia Kini last week, and the reaction was mixed. Some people supported me, a lot of people didn't. A lot of people said that I'm only blinded by biasness because I know him personally. Well, I need to know somebody personally to know if I like him or not, right? And when I knew him, when I got to know him personally, I found out that his ideals and his beliefs are in line with mine, right? And I saw that he was trying to do work in the ministry, and I saw he was trying to get things across. Right. I was in some meetings where he was discussing things, like for example, when he wanted to amend the University and University Colleges Act. I was in the meeting when they actually, uh, the senior officials in the ministry all then decided to say, okay, we will amend it and we want to empower students and we want to empower the faculty. I was there. So I saw things like this being done, progressive things that were being done. So, I don't know, some people say I'm blinded. I, I don't care. I've always made it known that I am biased in my writings and in my videos and all that. But as human beings, you will always be biased, right? I mean, as a journalist too, I've always been transparent saying that I am I am biased. So you take whatever you want to take from me now. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to listen to you also. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about Masdi. Tell me what you... Do you think if this was, this was the right decision? Do you think you should continue as a minister? Or, yeah. Or even who do you think you want to be the new education who, who do you think you want to be uh, as a new new uh, minister of education let me know let me know right let's have a discussion right so yeah
that's it thank you very much you've been watching and listening to the fat baby knows everything because i actually do know everything oh before i go <laughs> this is i want to say it's a new year's resolution but it's not i don't do new year's resolution but i thought i wanted to do something new for fat baby knows everything now it's 2020 and is that uh, i also want to include a small segment right where i talk about things that i uh, am interested in or or things that i've seen uh, like for example books uh, or, 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 or podcast or movie or an article i read or or, a, or anything that i saw that i find a little bit inspiring and i'm interested in and i would like to share it with you um, and recommend it with you um, so so today this week who's that behind me hey baby this is achilles now this is not what i want to recommend for this week <laughs> yeah, we don't but, recommend him at all yeah but my hands are full of like chili but this is Achilles Bustaman Azli, my son, you know, the fruit of my loins. Alright? Yeah, well, it's not just my own loins, like, it's her loins as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, so no, I'm not going to recommend you all to look at Achilles. But what I do want to talk about is this book that I'm reading. It's called uh, The Myths We Live By by Peter Cave. Now, this is a book which I find very, very. Bye, Achilles. Why well, actually? So all you can see is his forehead when he sits here. So, hey, wipe his hands. He just touched my the, the sambal on my hand. Um, so this book, it, what's happening? <laughs> hey, people are gonna like this is a serious video. He's video a serious most, boy. <laughs> he is a serious boy. Look at his boy. face. Look at his face. He's constantly thinking about world, the world problems, and the world's problems, right? See, so, Achilles, give them your serious face. Hey. See. Yeah. <laughs> now continue what you were saying. No, go away. <laughs> okay, so. Why go away? No, no, no. Wait, wait. You grow. Wait, you can. You can feature in our video soon. Um, so this is a book that talks about how we all talk about how dem democracy is the best system in the world, right? To 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 live by and all that. But this book kind of dispels all the positive myths of. Of, 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 well, not dispel the myth. How do I say it? Huh? It tries to say that democracy is lousy, lah, right? And it's all the, the, the things that we think that are good about democracy, they are all myths, right? Um, it says that democracy, because it's, you know, we all think that democracy is great because it's the people leading themselves. But then at the end of the day, because it's majority wins, then the people who are not the majority don't get represented, right? The, how is that an ideal system? And they talk about how this supposedly ideal system is actually cracking down and it's breaking down and it's it's not working in a lot of places um and uh i'm still reading it i, I i'm probably quarter way through i haven't finished reading it but by the time i'm done i'm going to talk to you a little bit more but so far what i've read is this is quite interesting right democracy is lousy actually yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and the first few chapters that i've already read, read uh you know i'm probably like maybe going to be a uh, yeah, I'm probably like, I don't know if I want to believe in democracy anymore, you know. But anyway, yeah, so this is the book. If you, if, you, if you read it, let me know. If you haven't read it, pick it up. And then uh, once we finish, we can start talking to each other about what we think the whole book is all about and how we feel about it. Alright? Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The baby's gone. I can say some more things. Uh, look, I also wanted to say that in this book, uh, like I mentioned just now, right? Um, uh, the majority wins, and then what happens to the minority, right? They're not going to be represented. Uh, it also talks about how democracy promotes populist uh, populism, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the uh, politicians will always go for issues that are popular, and just so that you can get voted. And if that is actually the right way to govern countries and to govern people and to govern society, so um, yeah, you know, so this book makes a lot of. Uh, points as to why democracy doesn't really work lah. but what is really great about it is it's not a dry book it's funny uh, it's very he Peter Cave uses a lot of uh, humor and comedy in his books it's exactly like how I like to make my content as well uh, it's not dry it's not dry it's not like one of those uh, philosophical books that you read from a university professor you know who's written a PhD or a thesis or a dissertation it's not like that it's actually something that uh, it can be quite entertaining right so, yeah, okay, goodbye again. I've got three kids, one wife, and me to support. So, you've got to, like, you know, help fund my life. 
So you actually can go to the Fat Bidin e-store, right? I'm gonna link it below. I'm gonna link it below, right? And you can get actually like Fat Bidin merchandise, right? And most of it are well, actually books. Uh. I used to sell DVDs and films and all that, but hey, everything's available on YouTube now. So now if you want to get Fat Bidin merchandise, it's mostly books. So I've got books here. I've got books here. See? See? See like this book? This is called uh, The Adventures of a Kerala in Afghanistan. It's a graphic novel. See? See? Graphic novel which I uh, wrote uh, and illustrated with my, with my buddy Apan, right? Uh, it's a non-fiction one. It's about my time in Afghanistan shooting a documentary for a month uh, when I was there. See, see, I'm a war journalist, right? So it's a really good book, right? Uh, I've got this non-fiction novel. It's called Operation Nasi Krabu, Finding Patani in an Islamic Insurgency. This book I wrote because I spent like a, I spent some time in Southern Thailand where there's a war there. You all know there's a war there, right? In Patani, right? Uh, I shot a documentary there which was banned for broadcast. But hey, they allowed me to publish a book. And if you get the book, there is a QR code at the back, right? There's a QR code at the back which allows you to watch it for free online. Oh, where's the QR code? Where's the QR code? Ah, there's the QR code, right? It's online, meaning you scan the QR code, you go to my YouTube channel. Lah. Okay, um, I've got another book. This is called Journal Dad, the Chronicles of a Journalist who Happens to be a Father. It's a, it's a compilation of my articles, my column when I was writing for the Malaysian Insider. It's all about like me being a journalist and raising a family at the same time. It's really funny. It's funny. It's funny. My best-selling book. Liberal, Malay and Malaysian, Writings of a Walking Contradiction. This is a compilation also of my uh, column in the Malaysian Insider. This one focuses more on like politics, race, uh, demonstration, democracy and religion and things like that. It's funny too. All my books are funny because I'm a funny guy, right? Yes, I am. And if you like films, I sell this book. See, I wrote this book with my buddy Wan Chun Hong. It's a guide to filmmaking, indie filmmaking. Uh, every chapter talks about one aspect of filmmaking and it, every chapter also interviews one like a uh, really prominent Malaysian filmmaker. It's really good. You can get all these books at the Fat Bidin e-store. Come on, feed my kids.